When it comes to Embernic and you're just going to release a new handheld and you're just going to instantly pick it up like me, yeah, you do have like sometimes a problem, the firmware is a little bit buggy. And that's basically what happened over here. I know there was an update, but I just wanted to see how bad it actually is. So the RG35XX, I must say, it did came with a surprise for me. Because they are like normally focusing on, let's say, like more expensive handhelds. Think about metal dish and stuff like that. But it's more like a budget solution for the people who just want to have like a more compact design. And at the same time, just want to play a lot of games. We don't have an analog stick, I personally really love it. We have like ABXY at the front. At the back we're going to get like four, let's say shoulder buttons. Yeah, like really shoulder buttons, more like back buttons. I must say like the configuration, if you're going to hold it, you can press them fairly easy. But personally, I'm not the biggest fan of this configuration. I'm just going to see it. We already seen it with Pow Kitty. So basically in my opinion, they're just like copying each other. The D-pad is feeling very nicely, but at least later on we're going to test it out with some fighting game, just actually how it plays. Select start, the menu button already mentioned, we're having A, B, X, and Y over here. The press itself, it's like your typical, I say, okay, long travel, tiny button, but they feel quite comfortable. It comes then with a mono speaker at the front. I wish they added like a second one, like with LDK back in the day, a couple of years ago. Like they have like two tiny speakers. The stereo effect is so much better. Not saying this is bad, but you know, like I love stereo sound and it gives more like a better experience when it comes to the games. Volume control over here, like a physical button. And at the top, we're going to even have like an HDMI mini out. So even this is something they implemented with this model. Then we have like the side two SD cards, one for the firmware, another one for the data. We have a reset button that can be touched very easy. And of course we have the on off switch. At the bottom we do have like a jack out. And then we have like the type C for connection for charging, data transfer. Another thing I already know like from this device is that it comes with a beautiful display. We have reached like the moment that we're not paying a lot of money or at least like not like major big amounts of money. But you do have like an really great when it comes to display itself. As you already can see like this thing boots up very quickly. Something I really love about this handheld is just the way how the display looks. So we have like a very small bezel around it, but I think it's not something that really annoys me. But when you're looking at the way how it looks when it comes to the viewing angle, this thing looks absolutely amazing. And for the money nowadays, they can deliver a very nice looking handheld with the display. Of course, if you're going to compare it, you will find some differences with different handhelds. But for the money, I think we can't complain. The device itself comes with a 3.5 inch IPS paddle that has a resolution of 640x480 and in my opinion that is quite good when it comes to certain games, I think it was also PlayStation 1. Battery life is around 5 hours, GPU is a very powerful one, and quad core and the same goes for the CPU and the RAMs come only like with DDR2 256 megabyte. A little bit less but seems to be working. But when you're looking at the menu, I really like what they're doing when it comes to the approach of this. So over at the right top corner, we're going to get like the indication of battery, the volume, how loud it is. It has been like setting the SD card so you know the SD card has been accepted by the system. And the menu is super easy. We're just going to get game rooms, favorites, history, search, and then having settings. So when you're looking at the menu, we do have like a lot of options. For example, we do have like the battery that we can select. Here we can even see like the voltage and the capacity of the battery. Shutdown, date and time, the EOL testing. The EO testing is basically like if you have any problems or you want to double check everything, you can see like and just uh, check everything and see if everything is going to be having any problems whatsoever. Press like start brings you back. The button sound the icon settings, background settings, you know that I've got a lot of stuff that you can basically like set up, even including like say the brightness level, stuff like this. So clearing history and everything that you're going to need is basically in here. So the approach of the system, I personally really like it. We do have the option for the external and the built-in SD card. So another thing, it's like the way how everything looks, it looks kind of nice to be honest. Look, here we have like all of the different categories that we can let's choose from. And every time, if you're going to choose us a certain, let's say, SD card, you're going to get like the categories where you can just basically find in your games. Okay, so when it comes to the game list, a little bit messy in my opinion. You have like this weird names, a little bit of bummer, no pictures whatsoever. Some of them do have this and PlayStation 1. You can just add them if you want to, but it's going to be like an absolutely nightmare doing so. The search function must say that is very convenient. So when you're going to search for a game, here you can see like basically it shows that we're going to get like different options. We're having alligator hunt for MAME. Alligator, no idea where it's for. But it doesn't, it doesn't like really like shows you what kind of system that it doesn't run on. But I want searching for my Tailgater game for the Game of Advance, for example, and you can just easily like click on it and play it like that. 
Another option I really like is when pressing the menu button, it brings you into the menu, basically like before you can go back to the main menu where you choose your game. Video display effect, even having like skyline, dot matrix, all kinds of let's say settings that you can set up. Then with least restart, making quick load and quick save if you want to. I must say like when you're looking at the layout, they did a quite a nice approach to this. Okay, so next thing I wanted to do is like switch between the filters just to see what actually happens. If this was like an HD filter problem, or is this actually going to be like a problem with the emulation itself? So the first one we're going to try out is like the scan line number one. Then we have like scan line number two. So we're actually going back to the game itself. Finally. Because still see some weird stuff going on with the game itself. It's not like that bad like with the previous failure. Let's go to the video display effect fast and just see actually how that worked out. And there we go. I found it quite interesting like say way how you need to configure your games itself. And I completely messed it up. Because I want to go back to the first part just to see actually how it will run when it comes to the speed itself. You have the idea that it runs way better than the HD filter or the other scan lines. It's kind of interesting to see that we actually can like mess around so much with the filter itself and do have like in my opinion a little bit better result. Another system I don't really try a lot, this time it's going to be checking out some Wonderswan. Must say, personally I did see like this device is like laying around on convention, but I never got myself the chance to play it. <laughs> We're playing Golden Axe, I'm going to get bashed like from two sides. Oh boy, that was a great start, yeah. The next thing I wanted to try out is some Tekken. So unfortunately this thing does have like an audio delay. The thing is pretty damn cool that we can make a quick load, quick save. So let's check it out, let's load it up, what I just made. You can see within a couple of seconds it will boot up. Yeah, another problem I'm having is like the audio delay. Unfortunate that it is happening because the frames per second, I can already tell you, this game plays like it should be. Also when it comes to the, the button configuration, everything is like it is. Absolutely amazing. You can even like mess around with this, like the video effect, like the scan lines can be implemented. But when you go to mess with this, it doesn't make it better. See, like we have like this minor audio delay and it is still like pro yeah, problematic. Vibration doesn't do anything, but that's basically what it comes to, let's say PlayStation 1 emulation, a little bit of a bummer. I think the PlayStation 1 is absolutely in great addition to this device itself. It looks beautiful on this display. Another thing is like with this device we do have like a couple of shoulder buttons now. Or better said shoulder buttons, back buttons. I'm saying shoulder buttons, crap man. I mean back buttons, so if I'm saying it right, like everything is basically like needed for playing actually every single PlayStation game. We have like all the front, front buttons that we can use. We have like the switching the power up. We can shoot the power up because that's something I've noticed with some of these like say devices where we're missing out a couple of buttons so it makes a lot of games unplayable. Even this thing does have like some audio delay within like Twisted Metal 2 I don't really notice it at all. The function that seems to be working just fine is the HDMI solution. It's a plug and play solution, don't need to do any tinkering with the settings. Like we've seen with different like budget handhelds, it's just plug and play with an HDMI function. And I think that is a very cool add-on. If you're going to bring this thing with you on vacation, you can just plug it into television and just play your games on the go this way. But when you're going to put in, let's say the HDMI function and you're going to mess around with the scan lines and stuff like that, I notice like then you're going to get like the best out of your, let's say, HD filter or dot matrix filter they are using. So I think it's pretty damn cool, to be honest, that actually this function also works on the television itself. And yeah, for example, with having a scan line, you can mess around with the expect ratio, even like one-on-one -on -one overlay. Let's put them on overlay. And I think it's pretty damn cool. 
So let's plug it out. It automatically goes back to the handheld itself. Uh, let's plug it back in. And there we go. I'm just gonna be honest, like, I do really like this handheld for what it is. And I mean, like, the firmware, it really sucks. Like, I hate it when stuff doesn't really work well. But when you're looking at just the way how quality-wise it made, I really like it. The way how it plays, like, for PlayStation 1, like, old-school games, this can be maybe one of my favorite ones when it comes to the handheld. So let's see if we can, like, update this firmware. Right there's some tutorial out there, like, Retro Game Core, like, Ross made, and, like, some videos about them. Like, I must say, like, when you're going to, like, upgrade the software and you have, like, very good compatibility with everything, Every single emulator I think you would have like a pretty damn good deal it's a little bit bigger than a Mio Mini so it's placed on for my hands comfortable we have every single button that we're going to need including the four at the back so we have like all the function buttons for PlayStation but I thank you for watching let me know in the comments what do you think of this and it would be great to see you in the next video